lifeboats. You've probably seen them dozens of times on ships without giving them too much thought, but in an emergency, they'd be your best friend. These little guys, and to be fair, some actually aren't that little, are the last lifeline for those in danger at sea. Today, we have stringent controls on the number and type of lifeboats that ships can have. From the massive, heavy passenger carrying boats from cruise ships, to the crash launching, rapid release boats found on cargo vessels. How do these clever machines work? Well, today we'll take a look at the history of lifeboats, from their days as simple open top wooden boats, to the advanced pieces of technology that they are today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your friend Mike Brady from Oceanliner Designs, and today we'll answer the question, how do lifeboats work? So when do mariners first start using lifeboats? Well, it seems like the obvious thing to do. If your ship runs into trouble, then you'll need to get away somehow. But the truth is, ships' boats weren't always originally focused on saving lives at sea. Ships of the 17th century, such as those belonging to the Dutch East India Company, carried smaller boats that could be used in emergencies, but these weren't lifeboats in the modern sense, rather small boats intended for various uses, including ship-to-shore transport. There were many different kinds of boats for lots of different jobs, ranging from cutters, which were broad and large for transporting goods from shore to ship, all the way to gigs, long and fast for quickly rowing the captain ashore. Back then, if your ship was lost at sea in combat or in a storm, very little thought was given to salvation or rescue. It was a foregone conclusion that ships lost in a storm would be lost with their crews as well. The ship was all they had. The real impetus for the development of the lifeboat came in the 18th century, particularly in Britain, where shipwrecks along the coast prompted efforts to improve maritime safety. In 1789, Lionel Lucan patented the first design for an unsinkable rescue boat, featuring a wooden frame covered with copper and buoyant materials like cork. The idea was for these boats to be based in stations ashore, where wrecks often happened, manned by dedicated crews who would row out if disaster struck and rescue as many people as they could. Now the new type of vessel was given a new name, the lifeboat. Although Lucan's design was a significant step forward, it was actually Henry Greathead who was often credited with constructing the first modern lifeboat in 1790. His boat, named Original, featured an iron keel, watertight compartments and cork for buoyancy. Crucially, it was also self-writing, an essential feature for a boat designed to operate in rough seas. If the boat was flipped in heavy waves, it would, in theory, turn itself upright again. The Royal National Lifeboat Institution, established in the UK in 1824, played a pivotal role in advancing lifeboat design and deployment, saving countless lives over the years. The lifeboat crews were very brave, and they participated in many impressive rescues. But soon, naval planners began to cotton onto the idea of taking the design features of those shore-based lifeboats and including them on the boats carried by larger ships at sea. With the adoption of passenger steamships in the mid-1800s, the size and passenger complement of those ships began to steadily increase. Fair-paying passengers expected a layer of safety. In those days, going to sea meant you were taking a gamble because often ships would never reach their destination and even simply disappear at sea. The appearance of lifeboats aboard ships at least presented a veil of hope for rescue. Throughout the 19th century, several innovations improved lifeboat design and function. Now, One notable invention was the self-bailing lifeboat, which featured mechanisms that removed water that entered the boat, thus increasing its survivability in heavy seas. Now, Lifeboats then were typically wooden, big and heavy, 30 feet or more long, capable of holding some 40 to 70 people. They had big buoyancy tanks fitted in to help with the flotation, but in a heavy, raging sea, the boats were still as good as sunk. They were open-topped, easily flooded or capsized. Not only that, but the way lifeboats were lowered from clunky cranes called radial davits meant that they might not even reach the water safely in the first place. Now, even worse, ships of the time infamously carried fewer lifeboats than the total number of passengers and crew on board. Now, this came to the attention of the public in 1912. The sinking of RMS Titanic marked a watershed moment for lifeboats and maritime safety regulations. 
The disaster highlighted the insufficient number of lifeboats on board the ship and led to the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea, or SOLAS, in 1914. The simple truth was that ships had just exploded in size and the regulations had not kept up at all. SOLAS established strict lifeboat requirements for all ships, including the provision of enough lifeboats or life-saving capacity for all passengers and crew, lifeboat drills and other safety measures. Throughout the 20th century, lifeboat design continued to evolve. Finally, the boats shifted from wood to steel and aluminium, making them much more durable and easier to launch. But it also meant they could grow in size. In 1912, one of Titanic's lifeboats could carry about 65 people. By 1936, Queen Mary's boats could carry 145. And not only that, but the old radial davit cranes were finally gone. These were rickety and relied on crew members to let the rope lines or falls out by hand, resulting in a jerky, uneven release for the boat. Not so fun when passengers were swinging six or more stories above the ocean's surface. The gravity davit was a clever device that could actually store the lifeboats up on deck, easily swing out and then use gravity and electric winches to smoothly and automatically lower the boats over the side. Critically, lifeboats began to receive their own propulsion. First steam engines and then diesel, so they could easily motor to safety, and even wireless radio sets so that they could communicate with the outside world. Old wooden top lifeboats, if they had got away from a sinking ship, often went days or even weeks before a rescue ship happened to stumble across them, if they ever did at all. The new technological developments meant that lifeboats stood a greater and greater chance of being discovered. Today, lifeboats have changed a lot, and they're actually part of a larger, comprehensive life-saving system, which includes life rafts, personal flotation devices, and sophisticated emergency and evacuation procedures. Modern ships' lifeboats are really marvels of design in and of themselves, reflecting decades and decades of lessons learned the hard way. They're built to withstand extreme conditions, ensuring the safety of occupants until rescue. The design features and construction of these lifeboats are governed by those rigorous international regulations, including those sent forth by SOLAS. Modern lifeboats are commonly constructed from robust, lightweight materials like fiberglass reinforced plastic, FRP, or aluminium. Now, these materials are chosen for their durability, their resistance to corrosion, and their ability to withstand the harsh marine environment. FRP in particular offers excellent strength to weight ratios and is totally safe from the corrosive effects of salt water and the harsh marine environment. Aluminium, while also resistant to corrosion, provides a lighter alternative, which can be crucial for the overall weight of the lifeboat and its launching system. Now, the construction of a modern lifeboat is a meticulous process that involves assembling multiple layers of materials to create the hull, installing the internal components and systems, and rigorous testing to ensure it all meets maritime safety standards. In fact, each lifeboat is like its own little ship, and quality control is paramount, with each lifeboat undergoing extensive inspections and even sea trials before being deemed ready for installation. Some of the key areas of the way modern lifeboats are designed and built can be broken down into these facets. First of all, buoyancy and stability. The lifeboats are designed with built-in buoyancy, either through the use of buoyant materials within the hull, or through watertight compartments and tanks that can prevent sinking even if part of the hull is breached. Stability is a critical design consideration, with many lifeboats capable of righting themselves if they're capsized. Second of all, they feature an enclosed structure. To protect occupants from the elements, modern lifeboats are often fully enclosed. Now, this design feature is crucial for survival in extreme weather conditions, providing shelter from wind, rain and sea spray, but enclosures also offer protection against hazards like fire or falling objects in the event of an industrial accident at sea. Third of all is the safety and survival equipment. Ship's lifeboats are equipped with all manner of essential survival gear. They're like a floating Swiss army knife. Lifeboats contain supplies like fresh water, food rations, first aid kits, thermal protective aids, and seasickness bags, but they're also fitted with navigation and communication devices like GPS, VHF radios, and even sometimes radar reflectors, or emergency positioning indicating radio beacons or EPIRBs to aid in rescue operations. Fourth of all is the capacity and seating arrangements. Now the overall capacity of a lifeboat is actually calculated based off of simple mathematics based around the number of people on board the main vessel, and this is all regulated of course 
by Solas regulations. Now, seating is designed to maximize space while also ensuring the safety and comfort of the occupants. Because of the lightweight, strong modern materials we have access to, lifeboats have become much larger and therefore more stable and safe. Queen Mary 2's lifeboats can carry some 150 passengers each in much greater safety than her predecessor's boats. Fifth of all are the launch and recovery systems. Lifeboats are equipped with launching systems designed for quick and safe deployment. Now these can include gravity davits, freefall systems for rapid deployment, we'll get back to that in a minute, and recovery systems that allow the lifeboat to be safely hoisted back onto the ship after use. Now I mentioned earlier that the gravity davit had greatly improved the lowering procedures for ships' boats back in the 1930s, but it was so influential that modern passenger ships still use them. Constructed typically from high strength steel or aluminium, gravity davits are engineered to withstand the harsh marine environment and the dynamic loads experienced during launch. Now this is no mean feat because a fully loaded ship's lifeboat, like the 150 person boats from Queen Mary 2, can weigh up to 24 US tons. Now the davits consist of immensely strong arms that can hold the lifeboat safely stowed in place while docked or at sea, and then a winch system with brakes that can control the descent of the lifeboat into the water when it's required. The winch ensures that the lifeboat can be lowered smoothly and at a controlled speed, even in adverse sea conditions or against the listing of a sinking ship. But in addition to lowering lifeboats, gravity davits are designed for efficient retrieval, allowing lifeboats to be hoisted back onto the ship easily after use. Now this is accomplished through a manual or powered winch system which pulls the lifeboat back into its stowed position ready for future deployment. This is really important because today, on passenger ships, the lifeboats are used for a special dual purpose, ferrying passengers ashore on excursions. If the ship can't dock, passengers will board the lifeboats, called tenders, which will actually run them safely to their destination and back again. This gives passengers the rare opportunity to see a modern ship's lifeboats in action. But the gravity davit can take time and care to lower away successfully. Now this isn't a problem on big passenger ships that would take considerable time to sink. But on bulk carriers and tankers, it presents a problem. These monsters of the deep have very little margin for buoyancy. Loaded down with all that dead weight, in an emergency they could sink in just minutes, leaving absolutely no time at all to ready and lower the lifeboats. A series of tragic losses led to the introduction of a special kind of emergency boat, the freefall lifeboat. Freefall lifeboats are constructed with a robust, reinforced structure capable of withstanding the hard impact of hitting the water from a significant height without compromising the boat's integrity or the safety of its occupants. They're typically made from the same high strength materials like fiberglass reinforced plastic or aluminium and the hull is designed with a streamlined shape to facilitate a smooth and stable launch when the boat free falls into the water. The interior of a free fall lifeboat is equipped with shock absorbing seating and safety harnesses to protect passengers during the launch. The essence of the free fall lifeboat's functionality lies in its radical launch mechanism. Instead of being slowly lowered with davits, a free fall lifeboat is essentially released from a ramp and literally free falls into the sea. Now this launch system consists of a launching ramp, which is inclined at an angle to the water, and a release mechanism that holds the lifeboat in place at the top of the ramp. When an emergency evacuation is necessary, the crew and passengers board the lifeboat, secure themselves safely in their seats, and close the watertight door behind them. The coxswain, or the person in charge of navigating and operating the lifeboat, then activates a release brake, causing the lifeboat to slide quickly down the ramp and drop into the water in seconds away from the ship or platform. And one of the key features of the freefall boat is its self riding capability. The lifeboat might enter the water upside down, its design will allow it to ride itself automatically ensuring that it's always in the correct orientation. Additionally, the lifeboat's fully enclosed, providing protection against fire, smoke, high seas, and other extreme conditions. Operating a freefall boat requires specific training and regular drills to ensure that crew members are familiar with the unusual procedures and can execute them quickly and efficiently. Now obviously it's a bone jarring ride for occupants and probably not one I'd be willing to do for fun. But in dire situations where seconds count, it's the difference between life and death. It might surprise you to know that modern day passenger ships only require fully enclosed lifeboats for about 75% of the ship's company. The remaining 25% are tended to by life rafts and inflatables. In fact, ships are fitted with special automatically inflatable rafts that will deploy as soon as the ship sinks around them. Over the years, the primary function of lifeboats has remained unchanged. 
to provide a safe means of evacuating people from a ship in distress. Now, this includes not only passengers and crew, but also, in some cases, survivors of other disasters at sea. Today, lifeboats are big, impressive pieces of technology, but they're not immune to danger. If a ship's list to one side during a sinking exceeds 15 or 20 degrees, it could become difficult or even impossible to lower the boats at all. Fortunately, modern safety features like radar and advanced navigation systems have lessened the need for lifeboats at all, but passengers can rest assured that if they ever need them, modern ship's lifeboats are more than equipped to handle the job. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Oceanliner Designs. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we get new videos out weekly. If you want to support my work and get really cool perks like behind the scenes and early access, please visit my Patreon in the link in the description below or sign up as a YouTube member. Come and join the crew. And as always, stay safe, stay happy. And I'll see you again next time.